Okay, go ahead and jump back to the Assets folder in your Drupal site, and in the Steps directory, open up the fifth step, which is called Unmanaged Submit. Copy the entire code, and paste it over the code that's currently in your assets.module file, and save it. Okay, in this step, we're going to bring together a lot of what we've been talking about in the previous videos. Because at this point, we validated our file, and now we actually get to take our file that's in a temporary directory and move it to a place that's permanent. In this file, we've added a single function called assets unmanaged file form submit. Now this is a submit function for the assets unmanaged file form form and we're triggering this by using the form API submit syntax, just adding an underscore submit to the function name. And in this function, what we're doing is checking to make sure that a file was uploaded, and we do so by looking at the values array inside a form state, and we're looking at unmanaged file. Now, if we scroll up to our validation function, we'll see that we set this value here to the file that we created using file save upload. So this is in our temporary directory. Now we just need to move it to the permanent one. So if this file exists, let's go ahead and do that. Our first step is going to be making sure that we have a directory created in order to put our files into. Now by default, Drupal won't create a file directory if we used unmanaged file functions. So we need to explicitly create a directory. If we didn't, we could just put the files directly into the default folder, but the problem with that is that if a lot of modules are putting their files straight into the default folder, it's going to be a little hard to figure out what modules are managing which files, especially if we don't have database entries. So what we're going to do is create a subfolder inside of our public files directory and put our files into that. So the location is going to be assets slash unmanaged. And then as we move into the Manage section, we'll create a folder called Assets slash Managed. This is our first example of using a URI to point to a file directory. You see that we're using public colon slash slash. And this corresponds to the public directory in our files directory. Now we can find out where this is by jumping to our Drupal site and going to Configuration, Media, and then file system. Now we see here under the public file system path that our path is sites slash default slash files. And we'll talk about private files in a bit and you can find out where this is located by going here. Okay, so now that we know where it is, we know that all of our files are going to be uploaded into this section if we use the public colon slash slash URI scheme. Okay, let's jump back to our code. Okay. What we're going to do is take this URI to this folder, and we're going to run it through file prepare directory. This is a function that will either create a directory recursively, so in this case we have a directory inside of a directory that we need to create, or it will take that folder, if it exists already, and it will give it the right permissions to allow us to write a file to it. In fact, let's go ahead and take a look at the definition of this function and see what's going on there. I'm gonna go ahead and control click it, which in my editor will take me to the definition. Here we go. The function takes two parameters. The first is the directory, and the second is a constant called options. By default, it's set to file modify permissions which will, if the directory exists, modify the permissions to allow us to write files to it, but if it doesn't exist, it won't create it for us. What we're doing in our function is passing in a constant called file create directory, which will create the directory if it exists, and then it will set the proper permissions. The first step in this function is checking for a valid stream wrapper. In this case, public colon slash slash is our stream wrapper scheme. And then if it exists, we're going to go ahead and trim the directory name. So everything on the right side of that scheme name is going to be trimmed so that we don't have any extra slashes. In this next part, we're checking to see if the directory is a directory already. 
And if not, we're going to check to see if the file create directory constant was passed as an option here. So what we're doing is checking to see if these two are equal by using the bitwise operator and the ampersand symbol, and then surrounding that by parentheses, which says, are these equivalent to one another? And if so, then we'll cascade to the next step of this if statement, which is running Drupal make dir, which will create the directory recursively. If that's successful, then we want to go ahead and change the permissions on the directory that we just created. So we're running Drupal chmod, and chmod is a PHP function, and you'll probably see that if you start to learn or if you work with shell commands. But this is a way for us to set the permissions for the group, the user, and the world. And by just running this as is, we're just using the default permissions that Drupal has set for chmod. Let's just take a look at this function real quick. It's a simple one. So I'm going to control click it and jump to its definition. Here it is. And now this is really simple. It's checking to see if the URI that we're passing is a directory. And if so, we're going to change the permissions on it to 0775. Now you might recognize this from our initial videos about permissions, default permissions for a folder. 775 is a good rule of thumb. And this is checking for a variable which we can set to change the default permissions for a directory if our server is configured differently. And if this isn't a directory, then we're going to go ahead and use the default permissions for a file, which is 664. Okay, let's jump back to where we were in the code. Now, if we attempted to create a directory, but it didn't work out, we're going to go ahead and return false. This basically means that we are passing it something that's not a directory, and we haven't passed the constant to create the directory. So this, this is a situation where Drupal wouldn't know what to do, so we're just going to go ahead and return false. However, if we did pass it a directory name, and we've passed the constant file modify permissions, this means that what we want to do is prepare the directory to accept files. So we're going to run Drupal change mod on this directory, but we don't need to create it first. So we just run this and it'll set the proper permissions. And finally, it'll return writable if the directory is writable already. So before we do any permission changing, we want to check to make sure that we actually need to do that. So we're using the isWritable function and passing it the directory name to do that. 